So let's talk about dating divorced dads and divorced moms. Hi, welcome to my daily talk. My name is Barry Selby. I am to get quickly to get introduced to myself and then the theme and everything else. I've got to start with the topic now. That's kind of what I realized yesterday or day before. So my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily talk. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 407. Yes, I've got a few under my belt. And the topic, as was suggested by a friend today, is dating divorced dads, and I put in parentheses, and divorced mums, because it's not just one way, it's both. So I'm giving you perspective. Now, I'm not speaking from the point of view of being a parent, but I've dated divorcees with kids, and I've also witnessed and understood other people in the same scenario, so I'm going to offer what I've learnt what I'm aware of and what I suggest. This is not the rules. This is not the only way of doing it. I'm just offering what I perceive to be the best way of approaching it. So now put all the rules in place and the structure, we can proceed. So thanks for being with me, as always. Um, this is a live interactive Facebook conversation right here. Although if you're watching the replay on Facebook or you're watching it on YouTube, you can only put the comments in afterwards and I can respond later on. And if you want to listen to this on my podcast, there's no commenting available. So. If I see comments, I would tend to repeat them out loud for those people who aren't watching this and can't see the comments because they're not available on YouTube and also not available on, on uh, iTunes either. So that's now, now you understand what's happening. <laughs> so let's get into this. And again, thanks for joining me as always and watching, whether you're watching live or on the replay. The topic has some interesting pieces. I'm going to speak to a couple of places. First of all, if you're a parent with children, a divorced parent, and you're dating, it's, an, it's a challenging dance to hold. So if you're a parent with children and you've got a ex in the picture as well, because I mean, I actually dated at one point a, a woman who had two children, but she was a widow, so there was no ex in the picture. So um, I put it in this perspective of there is an ex involved, just to give you a framework we're playing with here. So if you're a parent, a single parent with children and your ex is not in the picture and you're dating, there's the question that always comes up is, when do you introduce your date to the children? And that's independent of the, of the ex, by the way. And also then, how do you connect to the ex? So I'm gonna look at this from the point of view of, um, <laughs> the word that came up was escalation. I'm, <laughs> I'm speaking to this point from the point of view of um, level of intimacy and connection and duration. Let's put it that way. Escalation is interesting word that came up. So, <laughs> What can I say that happens? So if you're a parent with children and you're out dating, you will know when it's appropriate to introduce that person to your children. Now, I just had a flash on something. A friend of mine up in the Bay Area um, who I love dearly had a challenge because the guy she was in a relationship with who actually she was breaking up with kept asking her daughter if it was okay to marry the mother, even though she, the mother, my friend, wasn't having anything to do with it. So. Being a protector of your children comes first, period. I'm going to make it really clear. Being a protector of your children comes first before any um, line crossing with your, with your new relationship. So bear that in mind when you're on dates. Yes, it's okay to let them know you have children. In fact, it's a good thing to let them know up front. So in fact, I would say if you are dating, um, it's probably on your profile if you're doing a dating app. So to let them know you have children is one thing. To introduce them to your children is a whole other conversation and not what I recommend up front. So I'm going to leave that one there for now, and I come from the other side. If you're dating somebody with children, how do you approach that? Don't be in, obviously from the inverse of what I just said, don't be in a hurry to meet the children, because that's not necessarily appropriate at this time. It may take six months, or a year even. It may take you living together before you meet the children. It is really up to the person whose children it is. So being the single person dating someone with kids, let go of that one. You're in a relationship with somebody who has children. That's part of who they are. But to know the children until you're looking to, uh, there's the piece, that was the piece I was waiting for. <laughs> when you are in a relationship with someone who has children, the desire to meet the children really is only appropriate. I should say the meaning of the children should only be appropriate when you're looking at long-term relationship with the person. Because whilst you're dating, they're really, it's really not that relevant, to be blunt. You know they have children, that's all you need to know. 
when you're in a relationship for a period of time where the journey's gone towards where you're looking to move in together or you're looking to commit to each other for a long term, like you're looking for the long haul, that's about the time you want to think about the kids being introduced because it's then respectful. And that's actually for both sides, the parent and the data, that makes sense, to come together. So that's one part. The second part is... Um, the exes. There's a whole, I mean, this could, this would be a whole seminar talking about the different ways that really couples break up and, the, and working with the children, having time with the children, having respect for where, where, where the parents love each other still with the, with the kids and the parents hate each other with the kids. There's such a range in there, so I, I'm not going to be able to answer all the questions on this, but I am aware of the fact that sometimes it happens where the children are being influence influenced by the other parent and you know what I mean if you've been there where one parent is with the kids one way and the other parents with kids a different way and if you show up as the new person in the life of one of them it can get really messy now I'm not saying you should steer clear although sometimes that can be more tempting but I'm suggesting that you really keep your boundaries clean because there may be things said about you to the children by the other uh, the other um, parents they can make it feel, feel real challenging. Because what happens in this situation, because I've been here before, is the ex who is telling the kids about you, those kids then tell your partner about what they heard from them, their, other, their parent, about you, which is really messed up. So having healthy boundaries, having an understanding that what's happening has nothing nothing to do with you, because the, big, the biggest piece about this, and this I wanna make sure you get clear about, if you're dating a, a divorced parent that the ex is not in, and this is actually independent of children, to, to be honest, where the, the relationship between those two is not is, is more antagonistic than cooperative, with the children involved, they become the messengers of the betrayal. They become the messengers of the distress that one's feeling to the other, which is totally inappropriate because that's not, it's basically the adults aren't talking, they're using the kids as the, as the messengers. That, for a start is absolutely um, dysfunctional because the parents are willing to talk to each other. The second part is that that is their stuff, not yours. So if you're the new kid on the block, as it were, the new, the new partner in the relationship with one of them, whatever's going on between the two of them is nothing to do with you. Now, you may be um, putting pressure onto some things because you're in their life, but it's not your job to fix any of it. So first of all, don't be, don't be the therapist, not your job. Secondly, don't be the victim of this because it's tempting sometimes to go, to feel that somehow you're being the one that's being in, under pressure or disrespected or disliked because of what's going on. If it's that messed up, then you might want to walk away because it's really, that's where they have stuff to work on the relationship still. So if the two divorced parents are, you, are using you as a ping pong ball, which is what they're doing with the kids as well, that's not fun to play with. So really getting clear that you're not the victim of this and you're not the therapist either. So you take care of yourself, you withdraw and you put yourself first so that when you choose into that relationship, you do it from a healthy place. Now, if the parents are getting along, it's a lot easier, of course. And, and unfortunately, with a lot of divorces, that's not the normal case, it seems. But there are cases quite often, thankfully, where the two parents who divorced are actually amicable, where they're clear, where they're appreciating each other. And so when you're in the relationship with one of the par one of the parents, I'm using this very, not, I'm, uh, as you may have told, I'm not using gender in this, I'm keeping it neutral because it works both ways. There's a level of, um, I'm gonna say this now, let me put it another way. So if you're the new kid on the block and you're dating one of the parents, and the relationship is healthy between the two parents, the exes, then it can be workable to have a communication between both. Now, I'm being very careful I'm saying this because a lot of cases, the two... Hang on a second, rewind this. Okay. This is another part of the, the dance of dating an ex with an ex, if that makes sense. Dating, dating, dating somebody who has an ex, uh, divorced partner. your dating life with this person is private. So whatever happens between you is nothing to do with the other person. 
and in your conversation with them, in your um, exploration of relationship with this person, that other person has nothing to do with you. The temptation can be to communicate. And, and if your new love wants to tell their ex that they're in a relationship now, I would strongly suggest that you ask them to wait. I feel like this boundary where you're committing to a long-term relationship is where things start to change. And that may be the case to use all the case at times. I'm really not sure, but I'm feeling this, this key that telling the, the other partner that you two are in a relationship now, to, let the, to meet the kids, all these different pieces of the relationship are really available once you've got to a point of commitment. I know of some divorced parents who tell their kids and their ex about the person they're dating that week and they change the week after that, the week after that. And that's really messed up because the attachment issues the kids are going through, that's a whole other conversation about therapy, are really challenging. Not only that, but also the ex is getting a bit conflicted as well. So my suggestion is if you are in a relationship with someone who has kids in, in a divorce, is keep your relationship private from them for now. Yes, the kids may find out from the, from the parent that they're seeing somebody, and they may be demanding from the parent to see that, meet that person. That's a whole other conversation. But again, to the best of your ability, especially for the first few months, if not longer, depending on how long you get to know each other and how quickly you're getting into an intimate, connected, committed relationship. Keep your relationship private. You and the other person, that's it, the two of you. The kids, the exes aren't involved in this conversation at this point. But I want to make sure you get the point about this, is that in that relationship that they have, you're not the victim, you're not the therapist. So anytime you're in that connection, that communication, you keep yourself clear. You take care of yourself and you I won't say, well, I won't say protect yourself, but you hold yourself in a place of self-respect and self-care so you don't feel like you don't become the ping pong ball because there have been cases before, and I know of several of them. I don't think it happened to me. No, it didn't happen to me, thankfully, where the new person becomes the ping pong ball and the, um, I don't want to use the right word for this. It's a sense of being the volatile bomb passed between the two partners and that's really messed up so if that's the case of what's going on that's their stuff not yours and I mentioned before if you're feeling like you're being the um, trigger point for both partners you may want to walk away because it isn't your job to fix it again it's not your job to be the victim either so take care of yourself and pull yourself out and really respect yourself because a relationship can only work when both partners are actually respecting each other and responding to each other and when there's this antagonism between the exes and, it can't, and the kids aren't helping it, that relationship's going to be harder to do. So you might want to reconsider your choices. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't date divorced parents. That's not what I'm talking about because that will stop the dating pool completely because <laughs> there are plenty of people out there who are divorced parents who may want to go on dates. But, but I want to say that there's a way of doing it wisely. And first what it comes back to is what do you really want? Because if you really want a relationship that's healthy with a partner that's healthy and respectful of people around him, you probably won't date somebody who's going through a massively painful divorce yet. You might wait to the out of it and healthy. That's one thought. The second piece of that is that sometimes being single is actually a healthier place to be. And I've talked about that one recently about single, about um, what did I call it? It was about three days ago I did talk about being single, a healthy way of being single. So that's giving me some things to think about, I think. Um, I think that's really what I want to put on the table. It's really just to plant some seeds and give you some ideas and suggestions about how you can be self-supportive and respectful of yourself when you're dating someone who's in a situation where they are a divorced parent. It's not the easiest thing to do, and it's also not the hardest thing to do, but it does require you to have some awareness, and if you have the awareness, then you can change things, and that, I hope, will help you get some clarity going forward in your dating life. So with that, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments about this one, please put them below. I didn't see anybody uh, questioning whilst I was talking, but in the replay I'll answer them. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. <laughs> um, you can watch these in replay on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. I'm also going to repurpose these and put them onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And they're also now on my podcast channel, which is on iTunes, and it's Messages from the Masculine. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I did put a post on my wall on my personal page 
asking for topics. So if you have any ideas and thoughts about things I can talk about, um, feel free to go on my wall further down from this broadcast, yeah, because it was a post before this, and put in some ideas there. I welcome those. Um, if you're dating someone who's a divorced parent, I can appreciate how you feel. It can be challenging. I've been there. Um, actually, one little sidebar. Um, one relationship I was in with a divorced parent, the ex-husband and I have become much better friends since we stopped, since I stopped dating her. Or she stopped dating me, actually. It was, such a, it was an interesting thing that he and I are actually good buddies. She and I don't even see each other, talk to each other, not even Facebook friends ever since. So you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so with that, I think that's... Uh, Let's do a little bit of a lighter note. Take care of yourselves. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. Again, this is number 407 in an ongoing series of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Um, hope this has been of help to you, used to you. And if you have questions, comments, please put them below. If you want help in this area of love and relationships, this is my speciality. You may have figured out after doing 400 plus broadcasts. On my website, which is barrysovey.com, you can find all my content, videos, um, coaching, my book, programs, products, etc., etc. There's also on the left-hand side of the menu a choice to sign up for a discovery session called Let's Chat. Click on the Let's Chat, sign up for the discovery session, and we can talk. And with that, I wish you a great afternoon. Take care of yourselves. This is Friday, so have a wonderful Friday night, and I'll see you again tomorrow for number 408. Take care. Bye.